Hello and welcome to the Anjurati studio. We are joined now by Cheryl Hackett, who's the uh, head of uh, trading at Aneco. Um, I hope I've got that uh, right. But uh, anyway, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for taking the time to be here. And um, before we start discussing the, the theme that we're going to discuss, and yes. I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, uh, just uh, tell us a little bit about you so that uh, it kind of informs some of the answers that we might get from you as well. Okay. Now, my name is Charles Hackert. I'm the head of trading within Eneco. Eneco is a Dutch utility, uh, roughly two, uh, two million customers, and it's already 10 years focused on a renewable strategy. Um, yeah, so basically anything we do is focused on getting the world um, decentral, sustainable, uh, together. That's where we are. And my role is within the trading team to manage all the exposures resulting from the business that we do as a company. Okay, so that tees up tees us up quite nicely in the, the, the piece that I want to discuss, which yes. is around renewables. Yes. How we integrate that energy source into our market system uh, uh, and so on. And as you mentioned, you've been doing it for 10 years. Yes. So uh, to start off with, I mean, what are some of the lessons from within an echo that you could share with others where you could say, well, here's how not to do it? It, it depends. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm on the trade floor. So right. basically, I manage the financial exposures. Yeah. And uh, that must be hard, right? Basically, the yeah. message is manage your exposures well, because yeah. if you don't, mm -hmm. uh, you can get hurt very badly. Yeah. Um, so one example, for example, within my company is um, we get some long-term exposures in. So basically our company is exposed to long-term electricity prices. If the power price goes down and you're into some long-term commitment and you don't do anything, you're not gonna be very happy. Um, so that forced us to take all kind of actions to do that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, the main message is know your position and manage it well from a trading perspective. And uh, with the, uh, you know, everybody's talking, I mean, when I look through the agenda here yes. at HEMA, uh, almost every other session is like integration of renewables, integration of renewables, integration of renewables. Yes. What is the role of the trading side of things? Now, because that's the thing, because yeah. I get questions about yeah. uh, should subsidies hurt it and stuff like that. Mm. My job is to, when they're there, when they're built, to integrate them in the market. So if you see what our trading company does, is uh, to make sure that um, yeah, basically we fulfill the role of balancing responsible. So we just need to make sure that we balance our supply and demand uh, broadly and on the same side manage the financial exposures uh, right. So, so when, when you integrate the, uh, the renewable energy sources, yes. and again, let's, t let's talk about the subsidies versus non-subsidies and, uh, and so on. Yeah. You know, uh, there is a firm belief that the renewable energy needs to be integrated or moved towards a non-subsidized integration model. Yes. So how far are we from a non-subsidized integration model? I think it depends on the on the type of uh, renewable that you that you talk about. I think solar is isn't that far away. Um, wind, um, yeah, it's not basically it's not, it's not my cup of tea. So uh, yeah, like, uh, is is the issue with wind? It's actually much more unpredictable. It's much less predictable than solar. At least with solar, there is some sort of broad predictability in terms of some sort of bell curve. I mean, you can get clouds and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but no, yeah, it's, it's, I think on a yearly scale, um, solar is less risky because it's the, the, the yearly uh, production is, is quite stable. For wind, those risks are, are bigger. But if you look from a forecasting perspective, um, solar is three-dimensional. So basically, you need to forecast uh, all the clouds on all heights. So predicting that on short term is quite difficult as well. Um, with wind, what I experience, and also solar, is that um, the increased use of technology and real-time um, steering is really helping us last, last five years getting better integrating it. 
So five years ago, we only looked at day ahead for the wind. Basically, we sold it, that was it. Now we scan real time all the weather data. We get our real time feeds in from all the production plants and we know the status. So it's the feedback cycle. And it, it seems to me that the more and more we link this up and computerize it, I mean, it's, you know, to the uninitiated when you talk about trading, it's someone manually pressing a button saying, I'm going to buy this and whatever. But it's becoming it, less it, and less. It, that's not, not the case anymore, it's, right? It's like I also stated in my presentation, mm -hmm. it's uh, becoming more and more uh, technology oriented. So basically, um, where in the old days you had a trader, now you have a computer doing the trading and you have a smart guy sitting behind it programming the computer, basically. And the function of the, of the guy looking at the screen is more like some process operator will check if everything goes well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like a command and control role rather yeah, than a, yes. I'm, I, yes. I, I, I'm doing it. Yeah. And uh, so is the technology alone, the, you know, that advancement, is that going to solve the integration of renewables? I mean, it depends on which or time are, scale. Are, are the conference organizers just behind the curve and they keep putting this stuff in because everybody else is? No, it depends how you look at it. I yeah. mean, if you look at the real time, yes, it will. Yeah, because we, we get so in control, everybody knows their the drill. Um, we'll be able to to do something sensible on the on the day ahead. Um, yeah, the further out you go, the well, the, the bigger the risks the, the become, the risk and the more it becomes yeah, your yeah, yeah. subsidy um, story, basically. Yeah, because yeah. it seems to me that actually the answer is to get really, really good in the real time piece, because that's almost what you know. Or, yeah, or, it's, or it's day ahead, you can go us, it's five only, days. It's not only the real time piece; it's yeah. also the stochastic piece. So yeah. basically, you want to know if you know the uncertainty, uh, you also know where you. What, what you're up to, basically, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and sort of as we're coming to the end of our uh, time uh, again, we're, we're focusing on solar because you uh, you mentioned your issues with the uh, with wind uh, yeah. uh, uh, and so on. In terms of that solar market, then, do you think we're actually at the tipping point of being be being able to accelerate that, uh, so we can say that okay, we can we can take on a lot more now because we've learned so much and the market is do you yeah, see where it's, I'm it's getting a bit to with the question thing. Yeah. if you look at the Dutch market mm. uh, the penetration is relatively low especially if you compare it to Germany so for my local market the answer is definitely yes a lot more way more how much do you think it can go to in Holland mm. D depends on which time scale right yeah right. In the short term? In the short term, in Holland? Yeah, you can easily absorb percentages like in Germany, of course. Yeah. Right. Easily. So very because significant. Because that has already been done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So very significant. Uh, well, uh, Cheryl, t thank you for, uh, for taking the time. I want to give you one last word, though. Uh, is, uh, you know, again, with the market trading uh, and so on, what is the, uh, the one thing that is still kind of keeps you up at night and and uh, 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 and is the thing that we need to kind of sort out within uh, uh, this environment to be honest yeah I sleep very well because I trust things will be uh, okay I don't see any hurdles on the road well that's a great note yes. to leave it on because uh, you can always come at it from a negative point of no, view but definitely uh, yeah. not no we're gonna fix it yeah. perfect Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you for taking the time. And thank you as well for watching the, uh, this interview. Very much uh, uh, enjoyed doing it. Gives you an insight into some of the challenges and actually how technology is just coming in and uh, uh, taking over the, uh, uh, the role of how we deal with that. Um, so thanks again for watching.